Okay, Ezekiel chapter 27, verse 26. <clears throat> Thy rowers on board ship have brought thee into great waters. The east wind has broken thee in the midst of the sea. Storm. East wind is never good in the Bible. Thy riches, thy fares, we talked about that last night, thy merchandise, thy mariner, mariners, thy pilots, we talked about this all last night, thy caulkers, and the occupiers of thy merchandise. And that would be everything to do with selling and buying. All the men of war, army, they are in thee, Tyrus, Tyre, and in all thy company which is in the midst of thee shall fall in the midst of the sea in the day of thy ruin. And it happened. Tyre is sacked twice. Once by Nebuchadnezzar. It's a seacoast city. And what they did is they went out to the island. And they built their city upon the rocks of the island. Alexander the Great came along and took the ruins of the old Tyre and built a causeway out to the island and completely destroyed Tyre the island. island. And the Bible says in, in the prophets that it would be a place for casting their nets. It's a rocky mound today and you'll find fishermen putting their nets, according to the scriptures. The suburbs shall shake at the sound of the cry of that pilot. Uh, you know, the, con the, the, the commerce is gone. We can't buy toilet paper. We can't get cleaning fluid. We can't get this juice. We can't get that. Sound familiar? Nothing new under the sun. All they handle the oar, that would be the oars, rowers, I mean, not oars, the mariners and all the pilots of the sea shall come down from their ships and they shall stand upon the land and shall see, and I shall cause their voice to be heard against thee and shall cry bitterly and shall cast up the dust upon their heads. Sign of mourning. Dismay. And they shall wallow themselves in the ashes. Remember Job when, when he got dismayed. He got troubled. He got, he got with, with the, uh, the boils and all that. He went down and covered himself and sat in ashes. It pictures, you know, we are ashes. We're dust to dust and ashes to ashes. We're just burnt up. They shall make themselves utterly bald for thee. Isn't that interesting? That is a sign of death. And I remember I was in a Baptist church and it was there for a period of time. And the men were all both, they were all shaving their heads. Well, I guess you don't read your Bible. Now it's natural because the law, you know what the law says? The law specifically says if a man is naturally lost his hair and become bald, the Bible says he's clean. Why would the law say that? Because the heathen were shaving their heads for the for the dead. The Egyptians would shave their heads. And Baptist Christians will shave their heads. Not even knowing like Christmas and Easter what they're doing. Now me, I get this thing. I want to be bald. I don't like my hair. And I will cut it down to a quarter inch. That's as low as I will go. That's not bald. And notice how this is a city tired they're talking about. And they are doing the rituals for dead people. People, family, co-workers, friends, neighbors. They are doing it for the city. Like the city is, you know, they're. Now 
and girded them with sackcloth. <clears throat> Yet another thing of sorrow. Your, your, your body, your flesh is just as uncomfortable. It's a sign of repentance. Nineveh, the king came out and said, everybody put sackcloth on and no food, no drinking. Even the animals. That's a revival. That's not going to happen in America. They shall weep for thee with bitterness of heart and bitter wailing. Man, it's like it's like their their wife. It's like their children. In their wailing, they shall take up lamentation for thee. Jeremiah took up a lamentation for Jerusalem and lament over thee, saying, "What cities like Tyre's?" Like the destroyed in the midst of the sea. I'll tell you what, what city is like Tyre is even better. Jerusalem. The city where God is. Tyre is it's no more. It's gone. Jerusalem's still there. When thy wares, we say hot wares, soft wares, tupper wares, underwears, Comes out of the King James 1611 Bible. You can imagine what the modern Bible say about it. Went forth out of the sea. Thou fillest many people. Thou did enrich kings of the earth. That's Mystery Babylon. We'll worry about that again. With the multitude of thy riches and of thy merchandise. In the time when thou shalt be broken by the seas and the death of the waters, thy merchants and all thy company in the midst of thee shall fall. Stock market crash. Economy gone. Well, where America's heading right now is we're going downhill. And listen, a Republican, any Republican ain't going to get us out of this mess. Antichrist will. Temporarily. All the inhabitants of the isle shall be astonished at thee. And the king shall soar shall be sore sore afraid. They shall be troubled in their accountant. And the merchants along the people shall hiss at thee. There's that hissing. It shall be a terror, and never shall be any more. Now again, Revelation 18. I want you to take everything that we read in 27. And I know we read 18 last night. But I want you to take it to another city. And he added to. And everything matching with chapter 27. And these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven with a great power. And the earth was lightened of his glory. And he cried mighty with a strong voice, saying, Babylon is fallen, like Tyre. It's fallen. And it's become an habitation of devils. I'll we'll pick this up when we pick up chapter 28, Lord willing. And hold of every fowl, and every cage of unclean and hateful birds. Now this hasn't happened to Babylon yet. Don't go looking for a city with a bunch of birds and devils. This is later. This is in the tribulation period. For all the nations have drunk of the wine and the wrath of her fornication. The kings of the earth had committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth had waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacy. There's, there's 27 Ezekiel. I heard a voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins. That you may receive not her blood. Now think about Tyre for a moment with all the industry. Think about the sins that could go on in Tyre. Theft. Murder. Prostitution. Adultery. Fornication. Slaves. Stealing of, of men and children and selling them. Maybe a kind of Mafia kind of scene. The theater.
all the sins that goes with commerce. Deceiving, false business, liars, shoplifting. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her iniquity. Listen, in America, for one righteous person, I would say there's a hundred unrighteous. Reward her even as she rewarded you. Double her, double according to her works. In the cup which she should fill her to the double. How much she has glorified herself. Pride. I told you about America last night. And live deliciously. So that much torment and sorrow give her. For she has said in her heart, I sit as a queen. And no more widow. And shall see no sorrow. That's America speaking. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day. Death and mourning and famine. She shall utterly burn with fire. Tire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. All the kings of the earth have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, lament her. Did you did you read that tonight? When they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off and for the fear of the torment, saying, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. Did you read that tonight? No man buyeth their merchandise anymore. Didn't you read that tonight? The merchandise of gold, silver, precious stone, and pearls, and fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, all fine mine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all vessels of most precious wood, and brass, and iron, marble. We read that last night. A cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankers. It looks like one big store that we have today in America. I'm not saying that's that store. And wine and oil and fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses and carrots and slaves and souls of men. We read that last night. Look at that, souls of men. That wasn't entire. In this Babylon city, they are actually selling their souls. How are they selling their souls? Come and get the mark. Because my understanding, my belief is once you receive the mark, I, I, I would think that there's a 99% chance you are just damned to hell. 1% chance maybe you can get out of it. I don't know. <clears throat> the, fruits, the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all the things which, which are dainty and goodly like toilet paper, cleaning fluids, you know how many times I've gone in December in the, in the grocery store we go to, and I go there, and it's not there. There used to be at the store, there used to be shelves and shelves and spaces and spaces of spaghetti sauce. And I have, there's one particular spaghetti sauce I have, I like. One brand. Of that brand, there's a couple flavors I like. I get those. And there's a, there's a, uh, Salad dressing, a brand and a, and a flavor I love. I get I could go to I could go to another city and buy that. Getting awfully little slim and slim on the American shelves. Maybe we're running to a tire. Maybe we're running to a Babylon. And how many Baptists who go to church go to church faithfully and they're not taught about these things? They're talking about Christmas. They're talking about Easter. But they're not talking about Bible doctrine. Things are happening and befolding. I'm not saying these are the signs of the rapture, but these are signs that the tribulation period is coming. And the Christians are just so blindfolded. You know why they're blindfolded? Because they're not being taught. You know why they're blindfolded? Because they want to believe the paganism over the Bible. You gotta have a guy go on YouTube and you gotta have a guy go on SoundCloud and go on Facebook to teach you the truth that you're not gonna get. 
from your pulpit. I've been in over five, I've been a member of over five churches. I've been kicked out of churches. Don't you tell me. Just because he's a pastor or preacher don't mean he's right. 2 Corinthians 11. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off with the fear of the torment weeping. Saying, alas, alas, the city of great fallen. Look at verse 18. 1818, 666, 666. And I cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, what cities like unto this great city? Now, where did we read that? You better prepare when we go into Ezekiel 28. Prepare Revelation 20, Revelation 18, Ezekiel 27, and Ezekiel 28. And Ezekiel 29 is against Egypt. This ain't put in there haphazardly. This ain't put in here, well, uh, oh man, I gotta have a filler. And then when you mess with the King James Bible and you add and subtract and footnote, you lose the cross reference and you lose the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of God. I will go so far as to say the, the, the King James Bible is written by the Holy Spirit. Any other Bible version the modern versions out of Antioch and Westcott and Hort are written by Satan. Now, I know some of my, my that they give a little more leniency. I, I don't. But that's me. You ready? Verse 19. They shall cast dust on their heads. Where'd you read that? And cried and weeping and wailing. Where'd you read that? Alas, alas, the great city wherein were, were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by the reason of thy, her costliness. Where'd you read that? For one hour she's made desolate. Rejoice over her, O thou heavens, holy, pro, uh, holy apostles and prophets, for God has adventured you on her. Look at 22. The voice of harpers, the musicians, and pipers, and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in her, in thee. All right, go over where Tyre is today. You're not going to hear the music. No craftsman, whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of the millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. There's no production. There's no bakery where Tyre was. The light of candles shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and the bride shall, shall be heard no more in on thee. And the rest of it is Babylon. These two cities are off. Now listen, God has a city called Jerusalem. Satan has a city called Tyre and Babylon. God has a city, Satan has a city. God has a bride, Jesus Christ has a bride, Satan has a bride. You know God has a mark? All you people, oh, the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast, the mark of the beast. Do you realize there's a mark of God? There's a mark of God, there's a mark of the beast. For everything God and Jesus Christ has, Satan has. We have Jesus Christ. Satan will bring his Antichrist. If God has a Bible, don't you think Satan has a Bible? And it's not just the, the Satanic Bible. There's more. God has, the, the way is narrow and few go there. The, and Satan has brought us a path of the destruction. So where God has the few of the one word of God, you guarantee Satan has more of his word. God has preachers and pastors and missionaries. Satan has preachers and pastors and missionaries. God has churches. Satan has churches. 
This is not taught in your churches. There is, all are welcome. There is not taught that that person sitting next to you in that pew in your church, how great your church is. That person may die and go to hell, or if the rapture, he's going to stay in that pew. Not everybody in today's churches are saved. Not every man that steps up to that pulpit is saved. I hear these Christians, uh, I didn't read the Bible through in a year. But they have much to say about what God, and no, you don't. There are people come up to me and this thing with Christmas. Well, who do you think you are? Well, first of all, I have a doctorate in theology. Okay? My two wives dress better than you dress. Accidentally, if, if I didn't turn my phone off, I don't use a cell phone while the preacher is teaching or preaching. The music has been correct in my house. I have written three theses on Santa Claus, on Christians, and Christmas, and Tamu, which I have been graded by a, a, a institute who has the authority of grading, and I've gotten an A's on my report, where I also give the names, the books, the international book number, and the pages where the information or the website that came from, and you're going to tell me what I ought to believe as a Christian, and I don't think you even read your Bible, and I don't even think you have the proper Bible. First of all, if you don't have the King James, don't come up and tell me nothing. Because if you want to, we can sit down and I will trash can your Bible. I can do it with three or four verses. I've done it in the prison. I've had many men in prison turn their perverted Bibles in and ask me how they can get the King James Bible. And I, and I went and we talked to the authorities and we got them King James Bible. And when at last I left because of medical reasons of that, the they, oh, how we love this book. I never heard anybody say they love the NIV. But that was a little funny drill. I can't say bunny. 